Hey guys, so I get asked all the time, how do I keep my horse from tossing his head up through the lope departure? First of all, we need to understand why that happens. Horses raise their head up for departure in order to get their front end elevated when their back is hollow. So in order to fix this, we have to get that background, get that top line soft and help the horse develop those core muscles so he can lift himself correctly through the departure instead of overcompensating in the face. I see a lot of times people will try to go to the face to fix this and they end up getting that horse's face and kind of cranking him around a lot and stuff and trying to soften him up. But in reality, that's not what needs to happen. We really need to go to the back and if the horse doesn't have the muscles to carry you, to lift you up and carry you through that, leap, through that lope departure, then it's not going to happen no matter how much face you get on your horse or no matter how much frame you get. Collected walk to lope departures are extremely important, whether you're getting your horse ready to show competitively or you just want to help him develop his best at home. The first thing that you need to focus on is making sure that your horse has great walk to trot transitions, okay? So if your horse can't pick himself up and get round from a walk to a trot, then the chances are he's probably not gonna be able to pick himself up correctly and go from a trot to lope. We always talk about slowing things down and making sure that they're correct and clean at a slower speed or slower gates through slower transitions before we try and do higher speeds and more difficulty levels. So be sure that your horse can pick his back up and go from a walk to a jog without coming up like this, without hollowing out, without going into a faster walk or whatever before he trots off. And chances are you're gonna find a hole there. So I do run over this a lot of times when we start working with people, we say, okay, well, let's do your walk to trot transition. And most of the time they can't even get that clean. So we have to go back and work on that, get that much more finesse before we wanna go and work on your uh, walk to lope departures. Notice how this horse lifts his back to step into the trot, okay? So when I squeeze my legs, I want that horse to relax in the top line and lift that back and really use him, his whole body when he goes into those transitions instead of trying to throw himself into it one way or another, all right? So if you're still struggling with these steps, I'd highly recommend you go check out our video, First Steps for Collection, uh, whenever you're done with this one. So once my horse is 100% in this area and I know that he's completely developed and, and uh, confident about what I'm asking him to do, then we can go ahead and start working on it at the lope. So what I do want to point out is that I never start working on collected walk to lope departures before my horse has the strength to consistently carry some collection at a lope or before he can lope off promptly and quietly every time I ask, okay? So your horse has to have the basic understanding of how to get from walk to a lope or jog to a lope whenever you give him the cue. If he doesn't even know how to get to the lope when you ask him to and then you're starting to ask him to frame up and carry himself and pick up his back and do all these things, you're jumping a bunch of steps and it's not gonna work out very well for you. So be sure that he knows, hey, whenever I give him the cue, whether you kissed him or you clucked him, whatever it is, lay that leg back there, he needs to know, hey, I can lope off and this is how I do my job. And then we can start working on the collection as time goes on. So I hope that you guys are already there. Be sure that you already have that in place before you start trying to ask for collected walk to lope departure. If you don't have these two steps in place, uh, you'll most likely just end up creating a bunch of confusion and frustration for your horse. And it'll probably be an unproductive wrestling match if you try to get him to stay collected through these transitions. The next thing I want you guys to take note of is that squeezing should only lift your horse's back. If you squeeze and your horse goes faster, you're going to have a problem there, okay? So there are times when I want to collect the horse and I want to be able to pick up that back and I want to hold him there all the way through the departure because he's going to want to start popping up. If he thinks that the leg means go faster, you're going to run into a multitude of problems there. So he has to understand that when you put a leg on him, it doesn't mean go forward faster. I know I'm gonna say that over and over again, but I have to emphasize this because I see people run into that so many times. Their horse might have a vague idea of what collection is, but on the other hand, he still thinks he's gotta go forward off it. So if your horse is not very sure of what different kinds of leg cues mean, then you're gonna have a hole there. Be sure that when you squeeze, the horse is very quiet off the leg, you can pick up that back, and he's not thinking, oh, I gotta run through this. Otherwise, again, you're gonna to have to be holding him back and you're gonna start wrestling with him. So we don't want that to happen. All right, so once our horse has great walk to trot transitions, we're gonna start working on some collected trot to lope transitions. I don't go straight into the walk to lope transitions because I feel like that kind of jumps a few steps. You can do it that way, but honestly it ends up taking longer than if you just took the time to make sure your horse was consistent and confident each step of the way. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna work on some trot to lope transitions next. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set my horse at a certain speed within a gate and I want him to maintain that set speed until we go into the lope. So we're past the stage of him jogging and then going into a faster trot and then picking up a hammer trot before he finally breaks into a lope, or at least we should be, okay? So any, if at any point I set that horse at a slow jog and he thinks he needs to go faster and faster because he's worried, I'm just gonna slow him right back down and try it again. Slow him right back down and try it again. We'll do this as many times as necessary, but we just wanna kinda just 
play those reins ever so slightly. So we're telling him, hey, I don't want you to, I don't want you to go faster here. I want you to actually transition. And I'm just going to play with my hands and legs there until he fe feels what he needs to do. And he's got to pick himself up and lope off, all right? What I'm looking for is that this horse stays quiet off the leg, stays relaxed in the back, and that he doesn't push on the bit, nor does he hide behind now, okay? If any of these things are happening, your horse is probably getting a little bit confused and worried, and we're gonna want to slow him back down and get him relaxed Dan. okay? And I don't mean just slow him down and then take a big old long break and relax and just let him completely forget about what you're working on, but at the same time, break him back down, just give him a moment to think about it, get yourself both set back up, and then go again. It's very, very important that you give your horse enough rein to make the move through this stage. So if at any point you feel like you have to muscle your horse back or hold him in place during this transition, chances are he's either worried about the leg or you've lost connection with the feet. Probably both. If at any point your horse is way behind the vertical and you've lost connection in the feet, stop what you're doing and go back and rewire that stop. You have to have those reins connected to the feet for this to work. All right, so once your trot to lope transitions are really solid and your horse is very confident in this area, then we can begin to work on our walk to lope departures, okay? So if at any point your horse raises up or he tries to trot off while you're working on this, then just break him back down, lift that back up, and ask him to try again until he figures out how to lope off, okay? I'll give my horse a few steps. Mostly I try to feel this out. Um, I don't make them just go from just a walk to a lope the very first time. I'll give them a little bit of leeway as long as I can feel that they're soft and relaxed and they're really trying to make that move, okay? If I feel a lot of anxiety coming up or that horse is really worried and I can tell he's unsure about what I'm asking him to do, then I'll go back to the previous step. I cannot emphasize this enough. A lot of times people want to jump over these um, steps or skip or just leave big old holes out there and you're gonna spend way more time trying to patch things up or fix things here and there than if you're just taking the time to do these steps solid all the way through. If it raises up a little bit in the front in the first few times, I'm not gonna really worry about it too much um, as long as he's staying soft in the chin and relaxed in the back. That's most two most important things. So while you're working on this, it's very, very important that you don't overcorrect your horse at any point or make him feel bad about what he's doing. Our main goal through this whole thing is to keep the horses relaxed. If we want them to have relaxed, quiet, pretty lope departures, they have to be confident in what they're doing. And if you start jabbing on them and poking them around with the spurs and getting in their face, then all it's gonna do is raise that anxiety so much to the point where he can't focus on what he's doing. All he's thinking about is, you know, I'm really in trouble, okay? It's gonna make a tense horse and you're not gonna get those lope departures that you're looking for. So I can't say this enough, do not overcorrect your horse when you're working on this exercise. So the horse I'm riding in this video has had a bit of training in this area and he's already had a couple sessions working on his collected walk to lope departures. So don't expect your horse to look like this right off the bat or in your first session or whatever. You're not behind if your horse doesn't look like this. It does take a while. This is a process that requires a lot of time and preparation. And even once your horse knows what to do, you still have to allow time for his muscle development to catch up so he can consistently carry you uh, collected through these, uh, through these transitions. When I lope off, notice how I don't go very long before breaking my horse back down to a walk and then trying it again. So if you lope off every time and you go around like three circles before breaking him back down, what's gonna happen is that not only are you gonna wear your horse out so much faster, but you're also not gonna get in those repetitions that you need to make progress on your departures. All right, so there are a few things I want you guys to remember. Be sure your horse knows how to lope off easily before you start asking him to do it collected, okay? He has to be very confident in that area. Secondly, uh, be sure you can ask for and maintain some collection at a lope. This is at least my recommendation. This is the way I do it. I want my horses to have at least some of that muscle development already there. They have to have an understanding of what it means before I start asking them to take those collected walk to lope departures because that does take a lot of muscle and it takes a lot of um, focus for them to be able to do that. And I don't want to be skipping steps or making it harder on them than it has to be, okay? And finally, before working on your walk to lope transitions, be sure that you haven't missed any holes. So I should go back and check your um, walk to jog transitions. Make sure he's very solid and confident in that area so you can set yourself up for success. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. As always, we appreciate each one of you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.